Okay, so what was the idea? Well, a perfect cipher would be one where even if you knew the encryption algorithm and the ciphertext, it wouldn't tell you anything about the plain text. I.e., you've got a uh, list of possible plain text, and and you're not allowed, and you're not you're not able to shrink that down any. Uh, in particular, you're not allowed to shrink it down to a single one, but actually you can't shrink it any. Okay, and Shannon, Claude Shannon, proved that there is such a thing as a perfect cipher. But what he also proved is that uh, such a thing would would require that the number of possible keys would be the same as the number of possible plain texts. Can we, can we do that? Well, yeah, we could. Okay, and this is the way it works. It's called a one-time pad, and it was invented, many people have said it was invented in 1917, but recently someone found an article that had a similar scheme uh, from 1882. So apparently it was invented in 1882. Um, and the way it works is this. You take a, an arbitrary plain text, uh, let's imagine that it's a bit string, and you take a key which is of the same length as the plain text, uh, also a bit string, and you XOR those together. So we see an example here with some 15-bit strings. Um, and how do you recover the, uh, the plain text from the cipher text? Well, you just XOR it with, a sh with the key again, and you'll get the plain text back. Okay, so notice that the space of plain text, cipher text, and keys are all the same. They're all n-bit bit strings. Okay, so what makes this perfect? Well, here's the issue. Um, let's not worry about 15-bit strings. Let's talk about 3-bit strings. A little easier to get on the slide. Imagine you had the space of 3-bit strings. So that goes from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1. 16, pos excuse me, 8 possibilities uh, of 3-bit of strings. And suppose that you, as the attacker, were able to see the ciphertext. Say it's uh, 1, 0, 1. And you also know that a one-bit or one-time pad is being used, okay? Well, so you know that the space of possible plain texts is that same space of three-bit strings, eight possibilities. And now suppose you decide you're going to you're going to remove some of those by examining the plain, this, excuse me, the ciphertext and knowing about the algorithm. Well, the problem is you can't because any one of those. Um, any one of those possible plain texts might be the pre-image of that ciphertext under that algorithm. You just have to find the appropriate uh, key bit string, right? So um, what, what does that say? It means that even though you know the ciphertext and you know the algorithm, you can't remove any of the possibilities. And that's, by definition, what makes it a perfect cipher. Now, why does the key have to be random? Well. Imagine that you knew something about the key. For example, you knew that it had even parity, that is, contained an even number of one bits. Well, if you work backwards, you could uh, take the, the ciphertext and that fact and eliminate half of the possible plain text, and so it would no longer be a, a perfect cipher. And so you have to know absolutely nothing about the key except you know, that it was generated randomly. Okay, so uh, it seems like this is a really great encryption scheme. So what's the problem? Why doesn't everybody just use it? Well, I think you can see right away that you have a, a distribution problem because if the key is going to be just as long as the plain text and generate a ciphertext which is of equal length, well, how do you get the key to the other end of this channel, right? So the, the sender and the receiver have to both know the key and if they have a secure channel to send the key, then why not just use the secure channel to send the plain text? On the other hand, if they don't have a secure channel to send the key, then how are they going to get it there securely, right? Because you don't want the attacker to know the key, right? This in general is called the key distribution problem. And it, it uh, comes about in any scenario in which the sender and the receiver have to share a secret, usually a key. If there is a secure channel already by which to send the key, what do you need the key for? And if there isn't any secure channel, how do you get the key there secretly? Right. Okay, so um, a version of the one-time pad is called the Vernum cipher. 
and it just uses, it just essentially is the same thing as a one-time pad. Uh, use a long sequence of numbers, XOR it with a plain text to get the cipher text, and then XOR it with a cipher text to get the original plain text. And you can see this is a nice thing to do with computers because they can keep track of large quantities of data and make sure all the bits line up and everything. I think the only difference between a Vernum cipher and a one-time pad is that Vernum didn't actually insist that the key only be used once, which is very important for reasons we'll see later. Okay, so a way to approximate this on computers is, well, where do we get this long sequence of numbers for the, for the key? Well, you might imagine using a pseudo-random number generator to generate a random appearing sequence of numbers, even though it's deterministic. Um, and so the, the advantage of this is you can run this on your computer with a particular seed to start the process off, uh, generate an arbitrarily long sequence of numbers to use as the, as the key, and then somebody on another computer can use the same seed and the same software and generate the same pseudo-random sequence and use that as the key. And this works pretty well, but you can see it's not as strong as a one-time pad because anybody who knows the seed and the algorithm can generate the entire sequence. And so the amount of entropy in this scheme really is only the amount of entropy in the seed, not in the entire key. Okay, so what have we said? We said that the one-time pad is a theoretically perfect encryption algorithm, and we've explained why that is. Uh, the problem is practical rather than theoretical. It requires just as much key as you have plain text and so that really leads to the key distribution problem. Approximation, which is often used on computers, is to generate the key using a pseudo-random number generator, which works pretty well, but doesn't give you really the strength of the one-time pad. Thank you.